Sony launched some new hardware and made it known that it has won this generation. Who doesn't love new hardware day? And this time it's Team Sony is dropping some new hardware ahead of the holiday season and they're slimming things up. Notably, not a pro, but the Sony did announce uh, some new hardware today. And with this hardware announcement, there's really something we got to dive into because Sony is pretty much coming out and saying, like, hey, uh, we don't care about Xbox. We don't care about the Series S. We don't care about the Series X. We pretty much are going to act like we've won this generation because, you know, we've got the most sales. And uh, we can get away with that when you are the true market leader. So what did Sony announce today? Well, they announced what we refer to as the slim version. This is the PS5 Slim, not the PS5 Pro, like many people were thinking were coming. And effectively what Sony has done, which is actually a pretty smart move, is they now have one console, it's slightly slimmer, but you can add or remove a Blu-ray drive. So there is now two options. You have a $459 or $449, excuse me, PS5 digital, and then you also have a PS5 disc. And the basic difference is, is that bolt on uh, Blu-ray drive right there can be added to either version. So there's one base console and then it's like, do you check the box of wanting a Blu-ray drive or not? And you can add one at a later time. That later edition will cost you about $80 dues. And Sony is also upping the internal storage to one terabyte. So it matches the new uh, Xbox Series X Black version, if you will, that retails for $399. And so Sony is doing also something interesting here, which you probably caught or maybe caught in many of the headlines that Sony is saying, look, uh, we are going to raise the price. They're actually raising the price by $50, where Microsoft is really worried and came out with a dual SKU strategy, which we all know now as the Series S and X. They came out with this value bundle where they were trying to undercut the competition and more than likely are taking a pretty hefty hit on that console each time it sells. And Sony has come out and said, Nope, we don't need to compete with that. We don't need to compete on price because our consumers, our consumers and customers are telling us that like they're going to pay that premium for the PlayStation console. And, you know, with 40 million PS5 sold, they might be right that the customer is willing to pay not anything. If Sony came out and said this is 999 bucks. I think there would be some pretty significant backlash from the PlayStation fans. But at the end of the day, Sony, by making this move, because they very clearly, and I think most people thought, that they would lower the price by roughly $50 or something like that, because that's typically what we would see this uh, late into a cycle, right? We're, we're no longer like new kids on the block. We, this is a current generation. We actually already know about Microsoft's next generation stuff coming in a few years, uh, even new hardware next year. But for this year, like we're starting to see what historically would be the timeline where we see price cuts by 50 bucks across the board maybe even higher however sony ha has pointed out and actually microsoft has too they're like hey this generation we are just trying to keep our heads above water because prices are being inflated it's hard to compete and cut pricing so much so that phil spencer is also on the record talking about pricing and i think what we're seeing from sony is just a reflection of the reality of what is going on Earlier this year, Phil Spencer uh, did an interview with Eurogamer. He quite literally said the prices aren't coming down. We see it now, and that's why we did the Xbox Series S. And he goes on to extrapolate. It's like, look, the pricing and the issues within the pipeline are not like what they've historically seen, where typically you, you hear things like economies of scale, right? Die shrinkage, and all that sort of stuff leads to higher margins. However, because of how the market and industry has changed over the past three years or so, uh, a lot of pricing has gone up. Labor pricing have gone up and everything else has. So those economies where you would typically see margin increases are no longer happening, which makes it really tough for Microsoft and for Sony, for that matter, to, to do this. Now, what would be super interesting to see here is if Microsoft actually discontinues that super low entry $249 SKU box next year. We don't think they're going to do it for this year. And that would be one way that Microsoft will also increase pricing to help keep it better portfolioed of, of margin for its products, right? If they get rid of that entry level 249, which we expect to see as low as 199 this holiday shopping season, potentially, uh, Microsoft you know, they're willing to do this because Sony has now set the bar of like, look, we're raising prices in the US and this isn't the first time we've actually seen it abroad. So when it comes to this guy, the Xbox Series S, Sony is very clearly saying like, look, we don't, we don't need to do this. We don't need to compete on price. We don't need to compete on an entry level box. We are not going to compete. They're making that exceptionally clear in that their strategy 
is going to stay the same. Effectively saying like, look, we have won. We are outselling Xbox at a higher price point. Why would we do this? And I think honestly, that is okay. That is part of the justification for why Microsoft is trying to spend $70 billion to get Activision, which should be closing potentially by the end of this week because Microsoft came in with a super low entry price point. Yes, it is a less powerful console compared to the PS5, but at the end of the day, the consumers basically said, look, we're still going to pay that higher price for the PS5 because if you're a PS, if you're a PlayStation user, you're buying a PlayStation. Now, we do know, and we don't have exact numbers, that Microsoft has been able to close the gap some. Last generation, it was at best a two to one. For every two PlayStations sold, Microsoft sold one Xbox. It does seem like Microsoft has closed that gap a little bit this generation, but it's not a huge, like a huge closing of the gap. Uh, we, Microsoft, again, hasn't officially said how many PlayStations they've sold, or PlayStation, how many Xboxes they've sold. Microsoft, let's be clear, has not sold any PlayStations. Uh, but with the PS number being around 40, we were, it looked like Microsoft's last numbers that accidentally leaked were somewhere a little bit over 20. So again, better than the 50% ratio. But if you're Sony and you're looking at these numbers saying like, man, we are hitting our estimates. We're barely keeping the, the shot, the stocks uh, the stock on the shelf, why would we cut our price to increase demand? And that's how you end up with this, with the PS5 um, bundle here at a higher price point. Now, hilarious, they also did come out with some uh, like little kickstand things and other stuff. I'm not going to dive into that. If, if you need a, a, a kickstand, there's a whatever. You guys go see. It. It's, a, it's becoming a meme, uh, their little stubby arm thing. But this is Sony's big, big holiday play right here. This is what they're coming out with, which is a, a refined console, if you will, a higher price point and a bolder strategy. Now, I, it feels like they've got some confidence. They know what's going on. They know how the market's going to react. The question becomes is, will they ever do a PS5 Pro? Potentially that's something they do next year, but given what we've seen from them already, it's not like a PS5 Pro is going to come in at a lower price point or even potentially the current price point. So it's just interesting to watch how Sony has been navigating this generation with a different type of competition from Microsoft, right? Last generation was one box, one price point, one sort of thing. And now Microsoft was trying to uh, you know, you know, surround them with two different things, right? With a undercut them and then keep something potentially on paper, more powerful. But it, at the end of the day, like PlayStation fans just bought another PlayStation. That That is really the trend that has just been playing out. And Sony's like, we can think that's going to continue to play out. We don't really care what Xbox is doing. And so there you go. That is their play. So there you go, guys. That wraps it up for the PlayStation news. Make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this channel is me.